Okay. I think we could get started so that we can give people as much time as possible to discuss. And also we're recording the session. So if anyone misses something, they can go back and see the recording. So this is an informal session to answer any questions from the teams who are preparing concept notes. Remember to pick your language of interpretation uh, for English and Spanish in the bottom. Thank you, Lourdes, for accompanying us. Recuerda que pueden elegir su idioma de preferencia entre inglés y español usando el botón de interpretación al fondo de la pantalla. Remember, you can choose your language of choice at the bottom of the screen. Let's get started so you have as much time as possible for the discussion. Other people may join us. So feel free to add your questions to the chat or just raise your hand since there's not that many of us. And again, this is an informal conversation to answer any questions about the concept notes. Who wants to get started? I see. Welcome, Maria Patricia. Bienvenida, Maria Patricia. Andre, you want to get started? Por favor. Did you want to ask a question, please? Sim, sim. É, boa tarde. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I have a doubt. The, the speaker is speaking Portuguese, so I'll do my best to summarize in English. Um, I have a question about the curriculum. Some people are not sure about which aspects must be included on the page. That was the doubt we had. This is a question we, we had for you. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. That's a great question. Um, uh, I don't think there's a, you know, final answer. We'd just like uh, to check that you have learned uh, that you're applying all this, but that might change, you know, from one team to the other. We'd like to know what you have found is most relevant. That will depend on the on the proposal and your approach. We'd like to see some examples, what the proposal includes, some documents, resources that the speakers have shared uh, that you're implementing. You know, just let us know that you have participated, that you have listened, and that you're working towards implementing this. But there isn't, you know, a specific rule regarding what you must include. It depends on, on your proposal and your approach. Maybe the other facilitators would like to add something to this. Great, that's clear. For instance, regarding the EDI section, I suggest you review the IAI's policy. That's a great starting point. It's just an example. And have a look at some elements that you uh, feel identified with. For instance, EDI within your team composition and the interaction with the different stakeholders. How are you going to consider all this? But they should also be included when you formulate the research questions. How are you going to include these topics when you ask the research questions as such? It's just a specific example, you know, uh, maybe that, that can help you. But, but I think this is quite open for, for the teams to decide so that you decide which was the most relevant part of the, of the course that you have implemented or will implement. Hansi, I see a question about the word limit. Um, we have not made any changes to the word limit that was shared in the document. Again, remember, this is a concept note, so we are not looking for a very long or extensive document, but rather a concise summary showing that you have um, some clear research questions that you your team has further developed based on the initial proposal that you submitted and incorporating a few key examples from the course in, in your concept note. Um, those who go on to the next stage will have uh, the opportunity to develop a more extensive and lengthier proposal. But at this point, we're asking for a rather concise document. Um, did that answer your questions? 
In some cases, you could consider having, um, you know, bullet points for some of the responses as well. There is also the opportunity to include a diagram. We really would encourage the groups to think about including some kind of diagram that it synthesizes how you're going to go from your research questions to your intended outputs, showing that results chain or that logic model that you're going to use in your proposal. Obviously, we understand that this will continue to develop. This is not the definitive or final proposal, but to show that there is a, a feasible and, and potentially realistic path to get from A to B, given the considerations of the, the budget and the time frame that, that, is, uh, that has been uh, is available for the execution of this project. <clears throat> it, no, I said the bibliography diagrams and tables will be considered within the word count. No, I would say that is separate. Bibliography tables figures would be separate from the word count. Other questions? Bueno, yo quería hacer un comentario, ya que está Florencia García, que se unió recién, que es del equipo de I would Manuel like to say something. Florencia García is here. She belongs to Manuel Miller's team. They've asked me many questions about budgeting individual participants, you know, the budget, the funding, and when they join other authors. I think you should ask the questions because it's also interesting for the other team members. Okay, I will. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Well, in our team, you know, we merged with several other teams and we're putting together a, a merged, let's say, concept note. So uh, we wanted to know about this because we're preparing the work, the territorial work and, you know, the project based on a platform. So we have several questions, actually, especially regarding funding. Okay, I think I have three or four questions. Number one. Number one is if each team, let's say we're four teams, okay? So will each team receive specific funding or is it uh, one specific funding for the whole merged team? Because we'd like to know the, 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 the scope of the, of the projects that have merged. That's one question. Sorry, just a second, Florencia. Just give me a second. I'm reading uh, uh, what Abigail is saying. Okay, funding. We haven't asked you to uh, nominate a PI or lead scientist because we know that many teams are merging. Um, when it comes to funding the projects, the IEA usually asks uh, the or has uh, an organization that receives the funds and they are responsible for sub-awarding sub the funds to the other teams. Does that answer the question? Yes, to some extent, yes. But what about the amount? If it's four teams, would that in with the, uh, the amount increase according to the number of teams? Yes. I would like to add, hello, I am part of Florencia's and Manuel's team. Our question, um, um, we, we want to make the project coherent and we don't want to make it impossible to implement. Of course, we want to do many things, but exactly we would like to know if merging teams and individuals increases the amount or is there just one type of funding? Okay. Originally, we had talked about between $10,000 and $15,000 per group. But if it's two groups, it's between $20,000, $30,000 and upwards. But it depends on the proposal. And we might have to negotiate at the time depending on your proposal. If we believe it's feasible and depending on the final team, you know, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the final group of teams and proposals, but it's 10, 50,000 per team. If there are more teams and the, the, the funding will increase and you may consider that when you set up the project. Thank you for your reply. Question two, which items could be funded? For instance, if it's devices, 
uh, we are talking about water safety, for instance, in our node, uh, water security. Um, so these water measuring devices or human resources, would that be funded, for instance? That's a great question, Florencia. I would like to share something with you. And this is not final. We need um, a more detailed document, but still. Have a look at this example. This is a call made by the IAI on immigration and mobility. And uh, the, the fundable items will be very similar. This is a Belmont Forum call that is now in process. In this annex, you can see, well, of course, the funds are not the same, the dates are not the same, but here they specified that the funds can be used to support research data, traveling workshops, communication, dissemination and scholarships. Usually the IAI funds are not used to replace or supplement the salary of investigators, although funding can be used for stakeholder participation. Um, you can also, limited expenditures up to 10% of the total project budget for equipment and software are allowed, but no overhead is allowed. But accountable administrative expenses may be charged up to 7%, okay? This text is a third paragraph of the document I've just pasted um, in the chat. It, it was just, you know, copy-paste. We need to consider also that there will be a co-funding requirement and the co-funding text can be found in that same document in the on the third page three it's co-funding re requirement this co-funding requirement um let me see co-funding encourages additional resources and this should be provided by the participants' organization, uh, government agencies, or other civil society organizations, etc. This funding might be financial or it could be in kind contributions. This can be, for instance, researchers', researchers salaries or those of employees or organizations involved in the project, scholarships for students, access to databases, uh, uh, professional analysis, other types of equipment, you know, uh, space for the work done, uh, and other things. I'd like to copy and paste this text as well. And you can see this at the end of page three. So please consider this. You do not need to decide this right now, okay? That's clear. But maybe you can think ahead and try and remember, think about which, what each partner will contribute. Because, because as the IAI, we have very limited resources and we'd like every team to look for additional resources as well. Um, so that w w we have partners that are committed to implementing this initiative. Great, thank you. That was a great question. Thank you. More questions. Uh, there we have Sonia. Yes, uh, maybe it's a ridiculous or uncomfortable question, but I'm sure you're aware of the, you know, the situation in Argentina right now. We have over 100% of inflation annually. And we have 23, 23 uh, dollar uh, rates, you know, the value, the dollar value is not a market value. So we're very worried about those funds and how much we can do with them. Because when you de deposit some money in a, an institution, they become, that money becomes Argentinian pesos. And then the, the value of the dollar changes. Uh, probably to half that value. So we're very worried when we deposit the funds, we will have half the funds immediately. So I don't know how to solve, we don't know how to solve that issue because maybe we might have to pay Argentina's inflation with the IAI. Okay, the CONICET has accounts in dollars and they have a budget in dollars. So maybe you can partner with CONICET for instance. But we do know that's a great challenge and the IEA is implementing a project in Argentina and 
uh, I'm not sure how it works. I do know that they have uh, done some uh, coordination work, specific coordination work with them. That's a challenge. We know we can work directly with teams and there are options as Elizabeth was saying. Okay, great. That's great information because we depend on two institutions. So instead of them getting depositing at the university, they might deposit the money at the CONICET Institute. So you, you, we avoid this red tape, you know, and we don't lose that much money. Okay, Sonia, maybe later on we can have a specific meeting with Valeria Bichamil, who is our uh, CFO, uh, so that we can, you know, create a, a specific plan. You know, it's finances are, is something huge to consider. Thank you. Elizabeth is saying that CCT Cordova works with this and, and I can help you with it, with that, with that kind of paperwork. Thank you, Elizabeth. More questions. Come on, make the most of this opportunity. We're here to help you. Regarding uh, leaders, I, sorry, I, I joined you a bit later. Um, up to now, we are organizing our work. We have four teams and two individuals. So we need to, to do a meeting tomorrow. We will have a separate meeting regarding the, the concept note. And we need to choose just one lead, two leads or four, one from each team. Okay, two answers. You're uh, basically creating a consortium, okay? Each team has their own lead and the two individuals. When the IAI funds the project, at that time, we will, we will want to identify one person that will sign a contract with the IAI. At that institution, we will get the funds and distribute the funds internally. And that person is responsible, for instance, for submitting the final report. Uh, beyond that, you may decide if you want co-leadership, for instance, so there's, uh, there's one thing, you know, submitting the report, the funding, etc. And then there's the other thing, you can decide yourselves uh, what uh, works best for you, okay? In the full proposal, you will need to um, describe a project management plan, uh, showing us uh, that, the, that the project is feasible. Thank you. Welcome, Yasenia. Uh, please go ahead. More questions. Uh, do we need to provide a detailed budget? No, not at this point. We don't need disaggregated figures. Don't include exact dates either. You may include maybe a, uh, some sort of chart showing the project stages and how you're going from the questions to the general to activities to a specific outcome. That would be very useful so that reviewers can understand what you're suggesting. But it's not necessary to have a detailed budget plan or how you're going to manage the project. That's not needed. And we don't need a, uh, an exact schedule right now. That will be a requirement, but in the, uh, in, in the next stage, because it has to do with logistics. But do remember that it needs to be a feasible and realistic concept note, considering the, the, the funding and time constraints. We believe that this is the first step towards a long term project. You know, this is a seed grant. Jacenia. Good afternoon. Sorry, I was late. Um, sorry about that. Um, I'm not sure what you discussed earlier, but I do have a question. In the concept note, uh, we had the, the, the team participants. Sorry, the, the children are speaking. Uh, in this concept note, can we already include the other disciplines uh, in the project that are important? Or should we just uh, keep the five members or five original disciplines and then integrate them later on. 
you can include anyone you like at this stage. We're not going to thoroughly evaluate every member, but you're very, they're very welcome. What we need to see if, is that if they belong from to the initial team, if you have involved other participants uh, or, or individuals from the government, uh, but if you want to, you know, make a list of all the other members that will part might participate, that's fine. Our team did not merge with another team. We have the original Cuban team, but we have included two individual participants, one from Peru and another one from Uruguay, and we're including that in the concept note. So I would like to ask if we can also include the other research that we have that uh, that couldn't take the course, you know, because of the uh, number of participants limitation. Yes, you can do that. Please remember that uh, at least two people from the team need to have completed the course and received the, the certificate. On Monday, I think we will be sending out the certificates. Ellie asks if we should include the, the resumes and, and who's everyone, everyone who is included in the project. Consider that uh, as well. Maybe you don't want to include 10 new people because you will need to get everyone's resume at the time, but, uh, but you can do that. It's up to you. Uh, we're going to work with respiratory issues and, and dengue vectors. So we needed a decision maker and she will ensure this, uh, our access to dengue information, etc., uh, indices, etc. And we needed someone. And we also needed a mathematician. He will be working with modeling and all that. So we needed these people. They're very important in the project. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Jasenia. And as I was saying, you may include a diagram, a chart. If it's essential for you to show a structure or your roles, that's that's fine. You don't need to, you know, write it out. But it's up to you. Okay, you have to decide what it's uh, what you need to show so that the reviewers can understand the concept note. Okay, thank you. More questions. Guillermo, Rocio, uh, Pansy's team, more questions and doubts. Matias, Irene, Maria Inés, comments or questions that your teams have asked and maybe you'd like to share. In the meantime, I can share something I discussed with my teams. First of all, the, you know, this diagram or chart, it would be nice to have this visual representation of the work plan. And also some teams need to show that their theoretical framework or analysis framework um, to develop the methodology. And that will change from one proposal to the other. But we'll need to see a, a solid framework. And they can also uh, analyze uh, the, maybe sh uh, also show what you have learned from the TD lessons or you can include uh, things related to public policy, climate change, or from science to implementation, among other things. And someone said, it's a concept note. Should it be uh, based on concepts and more general, or should it be specific and realistic? I think maybe the concept note term is a bit misleading. It needs to be specific and realistic, okay? It's not just writing broad uh, ideas. The idea is for this to be specific. But we we'll know that this is like a living document and it's not uh, fixed in time. As a team, you have come up with ideas, of course, and the idea is to to analyze them. Let me think what else they asked me uh, about. It'll come in a minute. Jasenia had another question. 
Sí. Eh, lo otro era si nosotros vamos a, a, a incorporar un diagrama o, o explicar. If we include a diagram or include the stages in a summarized way. What concerns us is the number of words. It, it's, it's very few words, you know. Maybe you can be a bit more flexible, at least in the methodology, so that we can better explain the, the stages in the uh, project, because I think that the word limit is, is really strict. The thing is that I would like you to be concise. You should be using a diagram and the key references that uh, actually uh, will uh, allow you to keep within the word count. We're not going to be counting words, but we don't have, we don't want to have a two page proposal and a 10 page proposal. Please be sensible and as concise as possible. Remember that in the next stage, stage we will have an opportunity to develop the methodology, of course. And as scientists, many times we focus on methodology. And I think we need to also be able to effectively communicate how this research will have an impact and how we can ensure that the group has the necessary experience to help science um, impact decision making with specific knowledge and tools. Okay, thank you. Also remember that reviewers are not uh, experts in your field, okay? It's us, the facilitators, and some have some more experience in TD science, uh, others are more experienced in climate and health. I think about a general audience. There are others who are public health experts. If you write 200 words about um, a mathematical model, that won't be uh, an effective use of your of your space of your words, you know, if you consider the reviewers. Good question, Pansy. And we don't have a specific format for the CVs, so that's up to you. Just make sure that it's a simple one-page CV that highlights, you know, relevant experience for the project. And at this stage, we really feel quite confident that you have the relevant experience, otherwise you would not have been selected to be in the course. So, but we're interested in also getting to see how the composition of the teams looks now that we have new teams that are joining, new people joining, um, to see that distribution of expertise across the teams. Ana, I would like to say something. Actually, Manuel's team have made the most questions to me and Florencia and, and her colleague have asked many questions. Uh, I would say that after reading some concept notes, I think that they need to be well written, you know, they need to be well written. That's important to express ideas effectively. Maybe there's another team member that can read the concept notes, the concept notes so that they can clarify some doubts. Because when you write, maybe you don't notice that there are some gaps or some unanswered questions. Uh, remember that the questions asked are very clear. And if you can answer the questions concisely and clearly, it will be much easier for us as facilitators to review the concept notes, okay? We'll be able to understand the main objective, the specific objectives, and how relevant the topic is uh, compared to, to the call, okay? We need, a, we need a CEH focus, we need country relevance, and the project, project also needs to be relevant um, uh, for other regional proposals, especially when we think about the future. And also, um, remember, I have read some concept notes, but please play, pay close attention to the writing. Please use simple, straightforward language so that a general audience can follow what you're saying. Thank you. 
More questions. Anwar? In this moment, no, I think we have... I can't think of any right now. I think we've discussed uh, every question now. Thank you, Anwar. Florencia has a question. Point nine in the references. Is that the course references or is it just point item three, background and relevance? Okay. Um, any scientific article, um, as you write the concept notes, you would be writing your references, okay? Yes, okay, if you include something from the course, that's great. But if it's something else based on your knowledge, that's fine. It can be policy documents or whatever. And when we say references, you know, references, as if it were a, a scientific article, a technical report, where you will include your references. And also, you know, we don't need a, 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 a long list of references, you know, just a, a few key references showing that you have paid attention in the course uh, and that you, that you have general knowledge of the topic, but we're not expecting a, a long list of references. Maybe, I don't know, 20 references or something like that. Um, maybe it's something that you would uh, include in a commentary, in a scientific commentary. <laughs> and I know that for many of you, or for the teams that are now merging, the idea is to create a joint, joint framework. And that's difficult. Ah, now I've remembered. Someone asked me if this is a co-production process, how can we state what we're going to do if we know that the idea in the process is to learn from the communities? Uh, how can we say at this point, which will be the outcome if we haven't done the work yet? And I said, you're right. And if that's the case, we'll see. Uh, if it's your case, you can say that, state that in your concept note. Think about potential key outcomes, but also include the description of this uh, process. It's a great chance uh, to, you know, include a, a chart here and maybe uh, leave it more open when it comes to the outcomes because it will depend on the participating stakeholders. We understand this is a co-creation, co-development process, so it's not a, a basic science uh, process. It's not A, then B, then C, and it's a control experiment. No, it's not that case. But you can uh, include your co-creation, uh, co-production process. You know, roughly the stages and, and based on your experience as a group. And you can also uh, say how this is aligned with uh, I don't know, national adaptation plans or NDCs uh, or other documents. The idea is to have your project aligned with the political frameworks in your countries at different levels, you know, in the regionally or nationwide. We are already co-producing the concept note. So the co-production process has already started and that's the hardest bit. Yeah. But it's really fun as well. It's nice. Yeah, because it's the it's a creative section, but uh, it requires a lot of patience, and it's really challenging to uh, you know include everything in 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 your layout, let's say. And we're all working at the same time. It's it's really um, interesting. So hopefully we'll fulfill the requirements. Yeah, of course, the work has already started, creating a network, uh, building trust, listening to each other. You know, that's the foundation uh, of everything we want to do. Andrea would like to ask something. Yes, thank you, Anna. Good afternoon. 
We have an interdisciplinary team and we have participants from different countries. And the thing is that we don't know because in the concept note, we would all like to participate per country. But we noticed that at, in the first stage, I, it might be a bit too long to have uh, to include results for every country into in the concept note. What, what could you recommend? Maybe in the concept note, we might uh, have the outcome as uh, from one country, but we may say that this might the other countries might have outcomes in the future as well. Yes, of course, Andrea. It's not necessary to replicate a study in different countries. That depends on the research questions as well. If you want to conduct a comparative study, you need to replicate the study. If, if that's not the aim, that's not necessarily the case. But every team has a role. There might be a climate climatologist helping with climate data in Argentina. Another, there might be a social scientist working with communities and our community member working at a specific place. And we can have a, a geographer uh, providing the theoretical framework for, uh, for the whole team. So that's up to you. Other teams will work with, with three parallel sites and conduct, conduct a similar analysis. Um, you might hold regional workshops or share knowledge or hold training workshops, for instance, um, or co-organized by several countries, but that's up to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We would like to encourage you to exchange knowledge in the region, as well as good practices, good experiences, and to create a, a, a network. And as you're saying, Andrea would like to share networks, a network informi information that might be useful elsewhere. Yes, uh, but it's difficult because many countries were interested. But we thought that maybe we were trying to do too much and now we could focus on one country with our methodology and with everyone's knowledge, this could be replicated. But we weren't sure of this. The idea is, to, is for these funds to help you, you know, apply for other funds. And we can say we are a team, we have experience, we have done this somewhere and now we need larger funds to replicate the, the study in other countries, for instance. Okay, great. Thank you, Anna. Now it's very clear. More questions. We can tell you already that we have decided on the in-person uh, workshop uh, date. It will be held mid on the week of the 13th of March. So that's mid-March. Neuquén, San Martín in Neuquén. We're very happy. We're now planning the workshop jointly with the Ministry of Public Health of Neuquén, also with the municipality and the PAHO facilitators. Uh, we uh, Anwar, we met, we met with Daniel and Alejandra from Argentina. We're, we're making progress with the planning. So you hand in the concept notes uh, at the end of November. And after that, We'll review them and give you the results uh, in the first week of December so that we can start planning the workshop because we know that we have the holidays and then we need to, you know, uh, plan everything for next year. Any more questions from the group? Everything is crystal clear. 
Well, if there are no further questions, we can close this session. Please keep uh, keep uh, sending questions to your facilitators. We'll be sharing this recording with uh, every course participant. Today is the final day to you know complete the final exam, and hopefully we'll be able to send out the certificates um, on Monday. Uh, well, of course, to those who have successfully completed the exam. When you hand in your proposals, please tell us who has, uh, which uh, team member has completed the course. We can check ourselves, but it really helps us if you tell us who has completed the the course, you know, when you send the, the concept note. Please let us know who has received the certificate. And the requirement was to have two people from the team. Jasenia, the, the workshop will be held in Argentina, Patagonia, in Neuquén. So that's uh, the south, at the south of our hemisphere. Okay, for us Cuban, when it comes to immigration, uh, paperwork and stuff like that, that has to be done at least a month earlier because that's our requirement, you know, one month beforehand when you travel and all that. Okay, great. Okay, Jasenia. And this is why we want to do our best with planning in December now, you know, before the end of the year, because we know that we, all of us need to organize our, our life to do this. And we haven't decided on the number of people per teams because we want to know how many teams go on to the next stage. We had thought that we might have 45 participants in total from every team. And this is why we need to analyze the figures and see how many teams we have to ensure that each team can have a small number of people that can participate in person uh, so that the other members can maybe join us in the, in the meetings. But we understand that not the whole uh, uh, team will be able to participate in the in the workshop. You will decide who will participate. We will tell you how many, and that that figure will vary because some teams have merged, etc. And this is why we don't have a final figure yet. And and we also need to talk about funding. We'd like to have you all with us. But if you all travel, there will be, you know, uh, less funds for the projects. So we need to strike a balance. Well, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your participation. You've asked great questions and, you know, we'll stay in touch. Thank you. I have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Bye bye.